Are you in contact with children who just say yes all the time and have no opinion or are oblivious to the world around them? Then this video is for you. So the first behaviour that we will look at today are yes persons and these are simply young people who have not had the opportunity to formulate their own thoughts and ideas and so are more lent to following and just kind of going with the flow. So two key affirmations which I think would be important for these type of children would be I'm glad you are starting to think for yourself and you can be yourself and we will still care for you. This is an important affirmation as people pleasing can sometimes be a key factor behind a young person being a yes person. So my first tip would be to give options where possible and to try not to dictate to the child. An important thing to really take into consideration is that young people within this position may not know what they actually like and it's going to take some patience from us as adults to really help them to navigate their feelings and who they are. So one example that pops into my mind was one of my young people who wanted to watch a movie and he just wanted me to really tell him what movie he wanted to watch. And as I started to reflect and kind of give him options, he did become frustrated, um, which was completely normal as he was used to being told what to do. He was used to having things dictated to him. But the more we did this, the more times and opportunities that I had to encourage him about different options and to reflect to him about his nature and some of the things that he's shown me he was then able to grow in his identity and in his ability to recognise what he actually likes and what he doesn't like. Another strategy that we could employ is to respond to the child's no's in an encouraging way. So let's say you have suggested that you want to go somewhere with the child and they said no. Now how we react to the child is very important in this situation. So if we react with anger and frustration, we may be communicating to the child that when they are themselves and when they are expressing their wants and desires, it makes parents or other people angry and frustrated and may make them feel that this is something that I should not do as this causes this type of emotion. So one thing I'm not saying is that if a child says no, then we have to go along with it. What I am saying is we need to acknowledge that the child doesn't want to do it and try to give some sort of explanation as to why it has to happen. So for instance, if we need to go to the grocery store, the child doesn't want to go, I would say, I understand you don't want to go, but we need to go to the grocery store as I can't leave you in the house by yourself. And therefore we have to go. And by reacting in this way, we empower the child to know that they are allowed to feel the way that they are feeling. And the last behaviour that we will look at are children who are oblivious to the world around them, e.g. maybe living in a bubble and possibly seeing themselves as more superior to others. So some affirmations which would be key within this would be you can learn the impact you have on the world and you can learn to think for yourself and so can others. So one of my first tips would be to try to reflect on the emotion stirred by their behavior with the child. And one key thing to realize is sometimes children who display this type of behavior may not actually understand what their behavior is causing in other people as they really lacked causality and really lack an understanding of the impact that they have on the world. So maybe a child has caused some hurt to another child. The child that has caused some hurt may be actually confused and will need us as the big people in their life to really point at and really be direct and really give some clear understanding of what their behaviour has caused. So you said this to Joey and that is why Joey now feels like this. And our last strategy would be to use fundraising and project-based work. And this has really been helpful in my work to expose my kids to the world around them as many of them 
are really oblivious to the different plights and to the different ways people live. So one thing that we've done is we've, we've raised money for local homeless charities. And they've also done project work on historical individuals and peoples. And the key thing is not doing this to make them feel that the troubles within their life are insignificant in comparison to other people. But it's more so about simply raising an awareness that they are one person in a whole big world. And there are loads of other people in this world that are going through some things and have stories just like they do. So yeah, there you go, guys. Those are some strategies for working with young people who may have some difficulties within the thinking stage. And so in our next video, we will be diving into the identity stage. So as we've done in our other videos, we'll be looking at the job of the child and some behaviours that we may observe, which may possibly be indicators that the child is having some troubles within this area. So guys, if you've liked the content, please like, please subscribe. And as I always say, I will see you next week.